Welcome to Seaford Lutheran Church's online worship service. Today we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. So in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, I open this service. When the Feast of the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these the Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked, they're drunk on cheap wine. And that's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews! All of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions. Your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billowing smoke. The sun turned black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous, and whoever calls out for help to me, God, will be saved.
Let's pause to reflect. From Luther's small catechism, it says, Jesus has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering and death, that I might be his own and live under him in his kingdom. What amazing grace that God has bestowed on us. We are forgiven. We are sons and daughters of God. Now consider this. Let's imagine that you have an 11 year old son or daughter that you love dearly. Tragically, one day you discover that your son was horribly murdered. After a lengthy search and investigation, the killer is found. You have a choice. If you use every means in your power to kill the murderer, that would be vengeance. If, however, you're content to let the justice system do its work, and condemn the person to a life imprisonment, that would be justice. However, if you should plead for the pardon of the murderer, forgive, forgive him completely for the murder of your beloved child, invite him into your home and adopt him as your own son. That would be grace. And that is the grace that God has bestowed on us. And it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can do what we pray in the Lord's Prayer. We pray, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life. Fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life. Amen. The Gospel reading is from John 7, verses 37 to 39. Jesus promises streams of life-giving water. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not been glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's continue to share the peace of our Lord, whether in person or online or through a phone call. As it's Pentecost today, I thought that as our confession of faith, we would look at the third article of, uh, of Luther's, from Luther's Catechism. So it's the third article of the Creed, and it's on sanctification. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church he daily and richly forgives all my sin and the sins of all believers. On the last day he will raise me and all the dead 
and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Amen. Hi kids. What does the wind do? We can all, we've never seen the wind, but we can see what it does. We can blow the wind sock and show us the direction that wind's going and how strong it is. The wind can be really strong and blow trees over like it did in the park recently. Um, it can cause massive waves. Have you ever thought of the wind bringing peace? So even though it's winter, imagine it's a hot day, really hot. You're stuck inside. The air conditioner's not working. You're sweaty, you're hot, and you're very, very irritated. And then someone brings out an old fan. Can you imagine how nice it would feel on that day to have the wind blowing on your skin? It would cool you down. It would bring peace from the heat. So in the Bible reading, the disciples were in an upstairs room and they were in an upstairs room because they were really, really scared. They were scared of the Jews. Jesus had just been crucified and they were scared that the Jews would come after them. So they had the doors locked. They were also very, very sad because Jesus, their beloved Jesus, who they'd been following for years, had been killed and he was dead, or so they thought. And then suddenly, Jesus appears in front of them. And how would you have felt if you saw someone who had just been killed standing there in front of you? I would be terrified. I would think, ah, it's a ghost. I wouldn't believe my eyes. I certainly wouldn't be feeling peace. I'd be very anxious. And what did Jesus do? First of all, he showed them his hands and his feet and his side so that they could see it was really Jesus and that he was really, really alive. And then he says, peace be with you. And he breathes on them. And he breathes on them the Holy Spirit. And again he says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Now imagine how that breath of the Holy Spirit would have brought peace to the disciples. And we have that peace, the peace that the Holy Spirit puts in our hearts because we are followers of Jesus and he has promised to give us his Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Dear loving Father, thank you for the peace of the Holy Spirit. Help us to be reminded every day that you bring peace to our hearts, our minds and our bodies. Help us to share that good news with others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, I thought of this when I was out surfing and I thought I'd just tell this to all of you. Remember that if you have a bad day, God's always there for you. Good morning everyone. It's great to have Mark home and he doesn't need me this morning so I'm going to show you the better part of my head and get on with some work. Hi everybody. Well uh, it's good to be with you again this week and that the Lord has provided me enough energy to speak to you. Um, minus a bit of hair up here which I guess was expected um, but, um, but the Lord has uh, been gracious to us and and I've got a, a word of the Lord for us today, especially this wonderful Sunday, which is Pentecost Sunday. Um, yeah, where that great promise that through the ages that finally came, um, yeah, on this particular day where the Holy Spirit was released. And the reading I'm going to focus on today, um, yeah, really um, is all about this uh, promise of the Holy Spirit. And it's an it's in an unusual place in the in the scriptures. It's in John, and it's early on in John, and it's it's around the festival of uh, booths or tents or tabernacles. And this particular festival was 
celebrating um, God delivering them, uh, the Israelites, through their time in the desert. And part of the booth or tabernacle or, or uh, 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 theme was, was that the Israelites had to build a temporary shelter and it couldn't be too war it wind tight. It had to it had to be, allow the wind to whistle through it, so they experienced what it was like for their ancestors when they were travelling through the desert, right? So, and and so as you know, they they got out of their houses and and through this festival of eight days, they would they would live in these little temporary shelters and experience the elements, so that they. They were remembering what God delivered them from in the time when the, the forty years in the desert, and uh, and part of the uh, you know the, the festival was also grabbing big pitchers of water every day for the first seven days. They grab big pitchers of water from the the pool of Siloam, and then bring them into the temple and just pour them out on the out on the courtyard as as a symbol of the abundance of water that. God provided them, which saved them in their journey through the desert, and to celebrate, you know, God delivering them at that time. On the eighth day, which was again back to the Sabbath, they didn't do the ceremony because it was to symbolise on the eighth day that the seven days of what God had done, the eighth day was about what God was going to do. And the water in the future was to come from heaven to them to save them. Now, you might think, what's happening here? Well, in verse 28, Jesus has come to the temple and he's starting to talk, people are asking, is he the Messiah? You know, and is he Moses? And one of the interesting things he starts to say to him is that this verse 28, Jesus was teaching the temple, yes, you know me and you know where I'm from, but I am not here on my own authority, but he who has sent me is true. Do you know him? But I know him because I am from him and he sent me. The promise of the eighth day of the festival that God would send the waters from heaven for salvation. The waters from heaven in the form of the Messiah. And what's Jesus starting to claim here in verse 28? That he is not one who's like Moses or whatever, but he's been sent from heaven. And to give to be to be this Messiah. And so then all of a sudden you can understand on this eighth day when the, you know, the celebrations are going on, the greatest day, you know, on the greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood up in the middle of all this and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Wow, what a claim. Here he is actually enacting what he's about. He is the living water. That was prophesied, and this he is this eighth day. He is this eighth day that they've been celebrating. He is the promised Messiah. And then he says, Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, because the scriptures have said, This is the one, the Messiah is the one who's going to come from above, and he will bring be living water. And rivers of living water will flow for him. That's the prophecy. The living waters that are going to save people. They're going to save them and deliver them. And you can see that this is quite a profound moment that Jesus here is making this statement right in front of everybody and, uh, and claiming who he is. And this is the greatest day because this is the Messiah's day. This is Jesus' day. And here he is announcing who he is. Now, by way of explanation, John puts in, right? By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. And so now we are people 
who through the scriptures have come to believe. And as believers, what happens? Well, as believers, this water, that's pro- the, the, the living waters now gush through us. The living water that sustains, the living water that gives us hope forever, the living water that gives us salvation, it is now gushing through us. So you get the imagery. We are, you know, as we, as we, as we come to faith in Christ, it's not an option whether you've got water. You have it. <laughs> it's just going to flow. <laughs> it comes with the Messiah, with Jesus, with our faith. As we receive the faith, as we entrust our lives to Christ, the water flows through us. The promise of the Holy Spirit flows through us, giving us life. But you get the symbol here, don't you? It's flowing through us, which means we are able to give others life as it flows from us, as we are able to bring this wonderful Christ to other people, that they too may be saved. And it's not, you know, we often, you know, bandy about the Holy Spirit. And at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit is always there strong in each of us as we have faith in Christ. We are all Pentecostals. We're all charismatics. You know, we seem to think that there's all them and us. There's not. And Paul says in the reading that's one of the readings today, you know, there is one spirit. Stop dividing amongst yourselves as if there's different ones here, there and everything. This living water is flowing through us all and it's gifting us all, gifting us all to be flowing waters to those around us, to be flowing waters in the lives of others, in our families, as as Christ is enmeshed in our lives, as he is feeding our lives with this, this wonderful image of freshness, of life and um, yeah, and of, yeah, what do you call it? It's grace, peace, joy, all those things that this living water gives us as people in him and with him. So we are people who have been given the spirit of life, the living waters which will flow through us as people in And with the water, we'll continue always to bring others to know this water as well. Be encouraged to know that it's not you who bring people to Christ. It's the water within you that brings them, the power of the Spirit. And you might feel you're doing nothing. You might feel, oh, I don't necessarily know all this gushing water is coming out of me. But it is. And it's the power of the Spirit that is influencing those around you to know that Christ is there for them too. He can save them as well. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Spirit to flow into us like streams of living water, filling our hearts with the assurance of your grace and which overflows from us with love and compassion for others. May your spirit continue to sustain and bless Mark and Beth and to guide the medical team supporting them. May your spirit bring healing and comfort to others in our church family, including Kevin and Bronte, Addie and Gunter's son Andy, Wal, Peter and Carolyn, and many others who need our prayers. Lord, we pray for the thousands of people throughout the world who are still battling with COVID-19 virus. Give protection and strength to doctors and nurses, comfort to those who have lost loved ones, and guidance to those who are working to find a vaccine. Lord, we pray for those who have lost their jobs in this difficult time. Keep them calm and steady as they and their families face financial and emotional challenges and give them hope for the future. We pray for wisdom for our politicians and public servants. Make and enforce important decisions in these challenging times and pray that the world will steadily move towards recovery. In the midst of these hardships, we give you our gratitude and praise. 
We thank you for our blessed country and the good government and settled society we enjoy. We thank you for the thousands of people who work for the good of our communities and have risen to the challenges they have faced. We give thanks for the love and joy we share with family and friends. We give thanks for the many daily bless blessings we so often take for granted. Food, clothing, shelter, rain, sunshine, and the wonders of nature around us. And we thank you for your never ending love and forgiveness and hope. Amen. Let us join together and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When this earth was created, it was God who spoke the word, and it was done, gave his world to the cold earth. I'm weak, make me stronger, let me look to you for strength, make a new start, make me warm when I am cold, make me young when I am old, move me, touch me inside, let your love burn in me now, if I'm dead, Break the silence If I'm blinded by the dark Give me your light If I'm lame and I stumble Let me take your hand again Hold it so tight you pass, let me see you, help me know the face is yours, help me to care. Thank you for joining us today uh, to celebrate Pentecost. I'd like to thank Joe and Gary, Andrew, Job, Beth and Mark for sharing their gifts with us in this service. I'd like to wish Irene a happy 70th birthday from a couple of weeks ago. So we end today with God's blessing. Lord bless you and keep you Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn.